Good day, I'm Stacey Ann Smith, and this is your GIS News for October 25. The Meteorological Service has given the all clear for the resumption of normal operations following Wednesday's passage of Hurricane Sandy. The ODPEM says early assessments and reports suggest that the parishes in the western end of the island, including Trelawney, Hanover, Manchester, St. Elizabeth and St. James, suffered little or no effect from the hurricane. As a result, the curfews that were imposed on sections of the island have been lifted. Meanwhile, the parishes most affected were Clarendon, St. Catherine, St. Thomas, St. Mary, St. Anne, Portland and Kingston and St. Andrew. The Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management says activities in those parishes should gradually return to normal as assessments and restoration activities continue. We are finishing up the assessment of the shelters to have them reinstated back at school so we can have the school day um, beginning on Friday in some instances, in most instances, and um, by Monday, um, most, most certainly. Uh, beyond that, we are providing people with temporary roof cover so that they can uh, ride through the elements until we can see to the reinstatement of, of roofing. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller and members of the National Disaster Committee went on an aerial tour of the most affected areas of the island late Thursday morning. The tour followed a briefing at Jamaica House earlier in the morning. The Prime Minister met with several key stakeholders to discuss early reviews of Sandy's impact and begin looking at restoration plans for the island. And even as the damage assessments continue, the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, is assuring Jamaicans that its workers are out in the field coordinating activities to clean up and collect household garbage as well as the debris caused by the hurricane. Executive Director of the NSWMA, Jennifer Edwards, says the authority is aiming to complete the cleanup exercise within the next seven days. What we have asked the citizens to do is to separate the two sets of debris. So your household garbage is stored at separately. Our compactor trucks will come in and pick that up. And then for the hurricane debris, what we will be sending in are some tipper trucks to pick those up. The National Works Agency says early assessments reveal that roads in Kingston, St. Andrews, St. Catherine, St. Thomas and St. Mary were most affected by the passage of Hurricane Sandy. Customer Service and Communications Manager at the NWA, Stephen Shaw, told JIS News Thursday morning that the agency was coordinating with a number of other entities to get the roads cleared. We are responding. We have a, a, a number of corridors that have been impacted by falling trees. We have washed down silt, we have blocked culverts, and uh, we have scoured surfaces. St. Thomas, we are, we are going through extensively. We know that the, the area is affected uh, in a tremendous way by downed power lines, which is also a, a, a hindrance for, for us in terms of our response. But we are working with the other entities, such as the ODPEM and the JPSCO, to ensure that we can respond to persons as quickly as possible. Individuals in the most affected parishes are still advised to exercise extreme caution while traveling and remain on the alert for rising waters, especially in low-lying and flood-prone areas. Meanwhile, Jamaica Public Service Company JPS says its engineers and technicians are also out in the field, working hard to restore power to areas still in the dark. The Ministry of Health says all public hospitals remain open, with some offering emergency services only. Up to midday Thursday, the University Hospital of the West Indies and the Bustamante, Kingston Public, Victoria Jubilee and National Chest Hospitals in the corporate area were only offering emergency services. The St. Anne's Bay, Anato Bay, Port Maria, Princess Margaret, Savannah Lamar and Spanish Town Hospitals were also open for only emergency services. Thirteen other hospitals, meanwhile, are offering full services. They include the Bellevue, Linstead, Noel Holmes, Black River, Maypen and Percy Juna Hospitals. The Hope Institute, Sir John Golding Rehabilitation Centre, Cornwall Regional, St. Joseph's, Falmouth, Mandeville and Lanel Town Hospitals are also offering full services to the public. Meanwhile, the St. Jago Park Health Centre is only offering maternal and child health services, having lost a section of its roof in the hurricane. This includes vaccination and antenatal and postnatal care. Patients who need a doctor or nurse may attend the Greater Portmore, Sydenham, Christian Penn or Waterford Health Centre. The Education Ministry says while a number of schools have been affected by the hurricane, early reports suggest that the extent of the damage in most cases has been minimal. 
The Portfolio Minister, Reverend Ronald Thwaites, says the schools most affected are in St. Mary, Portland, St. Thomas, and Kingston and St. Andrew. He says many of them should be able to reopen their doors even on a limited basis by Friday, and the goal is to get the others ready for classes by next week. Minister Thwaites was speaking following a tour of the Donald Quarry High School, which was affected by the storm. The Airports Authority of Jamaica has a strong relationship with Donald Quarry, and we're going to ask them to come in and help with their equipment and manpower, as well as the fire brigade if necessary, to help clean up the place as quickly as possible. The objective would be to do so by this weekend, which would allow limited reopening of Donald Quarry's high school, especially for exam takers this year uh, on Monday. And finally, the country's international airports are back in operation after shutting down services Tuesday night. The airports were cleared to open at 7 Thursday morning. The Norman Manley International Airport, which closed its runway at 10 Tuesday night, began receiving flights again at 10 Thursday morning. Passengers are being asked to contact their respective airlines for information on rescheduled flights before making arrangements to go to the airports. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stacey Ann Smith. Thank you for watching.